Hello students, welcome to uh, day 18 video. We're going to talk more about genetics and, and um, some specific situations like codominance and multiple alleles. So let's come back to our story here of Jack and Jill. Um, recall that they want to get married, but uh, Jack's um, father was a sperm donor to a potential and could have been the potential father of Jill, right? Because Daisy was um, received the sperm that um, that created her daughter from this sperm bank. So anyway, we're trying to figure out could Donald be Jill's father. So to do this, we're going to look at multiple lines of evidence t today to say, is it possible, or, or do any of these evidences rule Donald out as being the father of Jill? And to do this with humans, we can't, um, you know, cross humans like we can with lots of other organisms. So we use pedigrees instead, where we can look at the genealogical relationships, the familial relationships, and look at characteristics and try to figure out how these characteristics are being passed on through generations and thus figure out um, the genotypes of the individuals. So we typically use circles for females and squ squares for males. Um, the a horizontal line like this indicates that uh, individuals are, are mating. Um, and then the, the notation is, is Roman numerals to indicate the rows or the generations, and then you have the number of individuals in each of the rows. Okay? Now in this case, our number, our row I, one is Jack's father, uh, Jack's mother, and I two is Jack's father, Donald, and Jack is two one. He's right here, and Jill's over here, right? Is the two the Roman numeral two, two? So um, anyway, for the rest of the time though, I'll just uh, be w using these symbols. The other thing that we need to remember is that individuals. Um, have full sets of chromosomes. In humans we have 23 pairs, 22 autosomes, and then the one pair that are the sex chromosomes. And that these pairs are homologous chromosomes, meaning that they have the same genes in the same order across these chromosomes. Recall that the, the reason that we have two is because you get one from mom and you get one from dad. Okay, But it's possible that there can be slight differences across these these chromosomes, these DNA sequences, and those differences can sometimes lead to the different alleles, to the, the different forms of a gene. So one of the first characteristics we're going to look at is freckles. Both of Jack's parents have freckles, and um, Jill or Jack do not have freckles, and neither does Jill's mom. So I've put a key up here so that we can see what this is. Now, freckles is also one of these characteristics, a, a gene that we've seen before, where it's a complete dominance or an autosomal dominant recessive um, inheritance system. So if that's the case, and these are the phenotypes that are represented here, then what would be the genotypes of these individuals? Well, all of the individuals that have no freckles are the recessive form, and so they must have they must be homozygous recessive for this characteristic. So they're all little f, little f. So if Jack is little f, little f, then what are Jack's parents? Well, they both have to be big f, little f. Because each of them have to have given a little f, but each of them have freckles. So they both each have to have a big f as well. So we can fill in our chart, right, with the genotypes of all of the people um, in this family that we're interested in. So now we can look at the, pheno the genotypes of Daisy and Donald. Daisy is little f, little f, and Donald is big f, little f. And we can say, what are the possible um, gametic combinations that come together in the fertilization event for their offspring? And it's they, all of their offspring can be either big f, little f, or little f, little f. So we come back and ask the question, is it possible that Donald is Jill's father? Well, Jill is little f, little f, so it's possible. Now, this does not mean that he is. It's just that it's possible. Had Donald been big F, big F, then there is no way, and we could have already ruled out that Donald is not the father of Jill. So we can also look at some of the other characteristics, like blood type. And here are the blood types of the five individuals. We can also look at RH factor, another um, part of the blood. And he, down here, um, the negative, RH negative blood type is recessive, and so that is represented by the not filled in um, phenotypes. So now let's talk for a moment about 
codominance and incomplete dominance. Codominance is where both of the phenotypes are dominant, and so both are being expressed. It's not that one covers up the other. So if you had a black mouse and a white mouse and they came together and both were being expressed, you would have hairs that are both black and hairs that are white that are being expressed. And from far away, that mouse would look gray. Another kind of dominance pattern that can, be, that can happen is what's called incomplete dominance. And this is where the black and the white mouse come together and they produce mice that look gray, but not only look gray, are producing hairs that are gray. So there is no dominant allele, right? The heterozygote has essentially an in-between version of the, of the um, phenotypes of the parents. Can you see? That? So that's the main difference here. Over here, you're still producing black and white hairs. You're just producing both of them, but then they mix enough that it looks gray. Over here, you are producing gray hairs. In blood types, this is the type of pattern that we see is a codominant pattern, where people who are only A produce a, an antigen on the outside of their bl red blood cells that is only A type. And so they have blood type A. The two possible genotypes for that then are this large I um, superscript A, large I super superscript A, or large I superscript A, and then this lowercase I. So an AAAI, essentially. Um, B individuals have the B antigen on the outside of their red blood cells, and they are blood type B, and they can be BB or BI. And an individual that is AB has both A and B, and this is where the codominant pattern comes in, because it's showing both A and B antigens on the outside of their red blood cells, and their possible genotype is only AB, and their blood type is AB. If an individual does not produce either A antigen or B antigen, then they are blood type O, and we notate that with the two small i's. So if we come back to the chart with the blood types, we can now and with the uh, RH factors, we can now start to fill in the genotypes for these individuals. We know that if you are blood type O, that your genotype is little i, little i, so we can fill in both Jack and Jill. We also can infer that the parents of Jack are AI and BI, and the mother for Jill is BI, right? Because they all had to have given the little i off to their offspring. <clears throat> we know that this parent had to also have been a little I, but we don't know what the other thing is because we don't know who the parent is. Down here, we can say that the uh, that Jack is negative negative for his RH genotype. And so therefore, we can infer that his parents must have been positive negative, positive negative, because they're both positive. And we can infer that um, Jill is positive something we don't know what, and the parent is positive something we don't know what, because there's just not enough information. In order to fill that out, we would need to know more about Jill's mother's parents and perhaps Jill's mother's siblings as well. And then we might be able to fill in more of this information. But again, we don't know the father here, so there's just some missing information. We it would be impossible to know what the other allele might be. So if we come back to our chart, we can now fill it in. And we have all of the different genotypes now represented in our chart. And if we come back then to the question of Donald and Daisy as being as potentially producing Jill, we can make our cross where we know that Donald is BI, positive negative. He's being crossed with Daisy, and she is a BI, positive question mark, something we don't know. So we ask the question then, what are the possible gametes that Donald can produce? And the possible gametes that he can produce are B and the positive coming from this allele, the B and the negative coming from this allele, and then the I and the positive and the I and the negative, right? Four possible gametes. You, you, you would never put these two alleles in the same sperm because in the process of meiosis, remember those are separated. What's the possible gametes for Daisy? 
Well, she can be B positive or B question mark, little i positive or little i question mark. And as we bring that down through our Punnett square then, we can fill in all of the genotypes. And we've um, then asked the question, is it possible that Donald and Daisy could produce an offspring that has the same genotype as Jill? And here's the answer. This potential offspring, little i, little i, positive question mark, matches Jill, little i, little i, positive question mark. So once again, we cannot rule Donald out as being the father of Jill. And we'll continue to look at this story uh, a little bit further in some of the pr uh, future lessons as well.